Ladies and gentlemen, many thanks for joining us here for this uh, episode of Speak for Smiles. So let me start closer to home and talk to you about Unilever itself. I remember reading when you had actually taken over at Unilever and uh, one of your priorities were, and you articulated that very well, saying that you wanted to increase the metabolic rate or the execution ability of Unilever. You also went on to say that execution is strategy in our business and organizations don't gravitate towards execution as that's not the sexy part of the business. So have you gotten Unilever to move to the not so sexy part of the business? No, no, I think see. I don't know about you, but we're in the consumer goods business where a lot of people buy our products every day. And one of the things we do when we visit countries, in fact, we will be doing that in Mumbai and in Bangalore this week, but we visit consumers. We visit retailers, we visit consumers, because that's what it's all about. And over my whole career, I visited many, many consumers in their homes. And I frankly have never seen a consumer who buys our products because they like our strategy. Mm. They buy our products because we are simply at the right price uh, at the right time, at the right place, in the right store. It simply is slightly better. You talked about the situation in the Middle East, so let me sort of take it forward from there. You've also spoken about how the situation in the Middle East is really a wake-up call so that we do have equitable growth in emerging markets, especially uh, countries like India. You've called it also the WikiLeak phenomena. You've spoken about how this is really a crisis of the Internet. Given the kind of geopolitical uncertainties, the geopolitical tensions and the geopolitical risks that we're now living with, how do you plan your businesses accordingly? It's interesting because uh, our Risa and myself last week we were in London and we had one of our board meetings and one of the things that uh, following the BP uh, issues and in the Gulf and other things boards are very interested in risk and risk management which mm. is one of the main fiduciary duties of boards and it's interesting I, I, I bet you that uh, none of the companies in the world had the Middle East as a high risk factor uh, it's simply things happening that you cannot foresee mm and yet you have to deal with them and the main thing you deal with in companies like ours at least is is to be sure I always believe this is that people understand our values because it's at the end of the day the values that drive people's behaviors that you can trust it is amazing to me that with all the things happening in the Middle East how quickly people took immediately care of the safety of our employees and their families mm. how people then protected the communities and then the assets and how people then started planning together on how we could protect the business. But there is no Bible that says that there are no written rules or laws or regulations because actually that would stifle a company and starve you of innovation. Mm. It is all driven by people who understand the values of a company, which is in fact the glue that allows us to operate across 170 or 200 countries that we are globally. How do you make something like Unilever more agile when you're operating across 200 countries in the world? And what about corporate bureaucracy? How do you actually deal with corporate bureaucracy? Well, by constantly asking yourself the question, how can I turn size into an advantage? When people say bureaucracy or slow or layers, uh, people see uh, uh, reactively the effects of size. But when you turn that around and say, how do we proactively leverage our scale, we can become tremendously fast. For example, being in so many countries, we can easily uh, test products in one little place. Mm. We can roll them out fast in other places. Mm. We have a natural hatching in that respect that allows us to take more risk than others uh, would be able to do, which allows us to go faster. We allow people to experiment and do intelligent risk taking. What I call spend a little, learn a lot. Mm. Uh, fail, fail cheaply is very good. You don't want to fail too expensively. We've created in our company a, another sense of urgency around things that we think needs to be done. We call it 30 day plans. It has nothing to do really with the 30 days, but it's a mindset of being fast. And increasingly we see when we have competitive actions in the markets or we, we uh, want to move that we can cut our own cycle times by half or by one third by just mm. re-engineering some of the processes that we have and turn our scale into a competitive advantage. Since you were talking about competitive advantages and competition, let me throw this to the audience now. We've got Avidut Tali here with a very interesting question. Do you feel any constraint or difficulties while setting new policies for HUL to uh, overcome or kill the competition 
from the two of the companies that is PNG with whom you have started your career and worked so long and the Nestle. Well, let me first say that I probably have had the fortune to work for uh, three of the best companies and I'm happy where I am right now. So, <laughs> but they're all good companies which makes it because they have the good values that we talk about. Let's just go to the way we approach competition. It is interesting that the main growth opportunities that companies like ours have is in fact the emerging markets, as I mentioned before, where the main opportunity is to develop the markets. At the end of the day, we try to have our organization focus on the consumer and improve consumers' lives. I remember once when I was in, in, uh, in another company that uh, one of our competitors says, every day I wake up, every day I look in the mirror, every day I shave myself, I think about how I can beat competition. And I said that day when I read this, that's a pretty sad life. Because every day I wake up, I look in the mirror, I also have to shave myself. <laughs> I think about how I can better serve the consumer. You see, and if we do that, we will be successful long term. And that's the principle we operate in. And the good thing is that the other companies that you mentioned have that same philosophy, although that's not always portrayed that way, but have that same philosophy. And that's why these companies are successful. They're built to last, not built to sell for that reason. Huh? It's very important. And we keep focused on that. Now, what we see in the emerging markets is very interesting. When in the emerging markets, competition enters, which has taken a while in places like this, to be honest. But when competition enters and these markets open, first of all, the consumer is better off. And secondly, these markets develop better so that people all win. Okay, uh, I'll get to the emerging markets in India specifically in just a bit. But since we are dealing with competition, Ila Jori <laughs> has, has a question for you on dealing with competition. Ila? In India recently, uh, we have seen few instances where HUL has taken the path of ambush marketing, for example, RIN, Dove. So in your opinion, what is its impact on the business and the consumers? Well, it's about execution and strategy. So... <laughs> <laughs> Ambush marketing is not very good if you bush the wrong bushes, you see. <laughs> so it has to fit in a longer term strategy. But having a little bit of fun uh, when it makes sense and using opportunities when it's fresh in mind with consumers is very good. Nothing wrong with that. You've had wonderful results in the cricket match and you should celebrate that. And if you can link that with some of the products and get people to feel even better, this is the time to eat ice cream, for, in my opinion when the uh, Indian cricket team wins. You never know when they're going to win again. But there is something in terms of connectedness to the market and speed that that says, but that's not how you build your business. That's just a small component of a longer term strategy. Mm -hmm.